Hello everyone, welcome to the Fire Artisan channel. I am Drew, today is day three of our Cedric Phillips Mono Green Monsters slash Beasts slash Aggro series. So, a um, couple things to note before we jump in the queue. Uh, the major one is that Core Set 2021 has been released. The cards are now legal in, in Arena. So, I'm sure we're gonna be playing a lot of uh, either new cards or new archetypes. So that's going to be kind of an extra challenge for us today. Um, but our deck is is the same. I haven't made any changes. There are definitely some compelling green creatures that I think we'll definitely see play in standard in decks like this. But for the time being, I just kind of want to feel out the new format with a, with a deck that we're comfortable with. And I want to finish off this little mini series featuring this deck. So we're just gonna jump in the queue with the list that we've been playing. And yeah, it'll be interesting to see what uh, sorts of decks we play against. I'm sure we'll still see some of the old favorites like Teamer Reclamation, some of the ramp decks. Usually the core sets aren't designed to completely turn standard on its head. Usually the changes are a little bit more minor, like a good card here or there. Um, yeah, this seems fine. I'm not sure how common it is for players to just send out a 1-1 Serpent. Doesn't really seem like what we want to be doing, so. I think I'm just going to start with the Barkhide Troll. All right, so this is a... All right, so on their turn, she's going to have first strike. Wow. And they can just play lands from the top of their library. All right, well, she seems powerful. Um... Yeah, I guess, I guess I'm leaning toward the Growth Chamber Guardian just because adapting might be our best play on the next turn, and we can't really trade with her anyway because she has first strike, even though the troll's a 3-3, so it's kind of my thinking with putting that one out first. All right, well, this turn actually looks just fine. No removal to speak of. So we could adapt, um, or we could just send out two more creatures. I think I like the idea of just sending out two more creatures here. I don't think there's anything too surprising that can happen in terms of making that attack. Yeah, this looks okay. We can do a questing beast next turn. I'm not sure how much how much trouble she's going to be for us, but I'll be interested to see what she can do. So this ability costs six. Okay. All right, I don't like how they're just targeting everything makes me think they've some huge huge spell to play here oh that's an eliminate nice good stuff from our opponent uh we can't make this block because first strike dead and then only deals two damage All right, so, I mean, the play is probably just Questing Beast, huge attack. I don't think we're gonna do better than that. Uh, 
All right, so there's our big attack. We'll see what's in store from our opponent. We're gonna have a 4-4 Pelt Collector if they do manage to take out this Questing Beast. Looks like we're gonna see a Chump on the Goose. All right. All right, we're definitely putting some pressure on them. Oh, that's problematic. I mean, at least they have to sacrifice the food and tap the wolf, so we may still have something of an attack here. I think the best draw is a land. Oh, that's a draw. That's a draw. So I think we just want like a 5-5 five, five Stone Coil Serpent. Um, yeah. I don't think I want to go in with the three because I don't know. I mean, they could just kind of let it through and yeah, I don't think I need to go in with the three. I think that would just get, oh, she doesn't have first strike. Oh, I completely forgot that. Okay. Yeah, that was a big mistake. I should have gone in with the Barkhide Troll. I mean, obviously still getting used to these new cards, but it has to be their turn for her to have first strike. Yeah, huge mistake there. Yeah, not happy with that attack. Are we going to see an activation on the Fiend Artisan? I hope not. No, I don't think they have. Oh, okay, they just want a goose. <clears throat> All right, well, I think I like the play where Yeah, I think we'll start with the Pelt Collector and then we can mutate the Gem Razor onto the Serpent to destroy the food, which either forces them to tap the wolf out or just kind of like chump block with it. So I think, I think this is going to be pretty bad for them. We'll see if they can do anything. Yeah, this is tricky because if they sack the food with the wolf, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, if they sack the food with the wolf, then they will not have that as a blocker. So they're just kind of dead on board. So we've actually put them in a pretty tricky spot here. Weird. I don't know if you saw that I got a like a legal attack notification somehow. I mean, I think the attack was fine. I think it was just a glitch or something. Okay, so this is a gruel deck. I think I like, I think I like these ones in here. I think they're very likely to have to have green permanence. I mean, I like Gem Razor. 
Oh, I don't know. The serpents are so good. Maybe one down on the giant growth. So we're going to be on the draw here. I don't know. I'm pretty reluctant to... Maybe I'll go one less on Bark Hide Troll. Maybe two less because we're kind of replacing it with these two drops. Maybe one less Serpent. Maybe I'll throw an extra Prey Upon in there. I'm not sure if we want to go all in on the Prey Upon. Ram through is a lot better in this kind of matchup because it's a bite effect. So uh, Prey Upon isn't obviously going to be, well, look at this hand. <laughs> look at this hand. Playing a deck with all forests. I wouldn't say I had a great idea of what to put back there. It was kind of between the Serpent and the Vivian, but I kind of like the Vivian in this matchup. I've only got two of them in the deck, and I don't think she would be that easy for them to answer. So Kind of anticipating oh wow they just had nothing to play there i mean i kind of thought i was just playing that into removal but but i guess we lucked out there yeah this is kind of tricky do we want to adapt right now they've got two mana up you know i think if they I think if they could kill this thing, they would have already done it. Nope, totally wrong about that. Well, they got us there. All right, so best draw is a land. Didn't get it. <laughs> best draw is a land or for them to just play a green permanent. Because these, yeah, these dudes are beginning to be a problem. <clears throat> I'd say it's time to put some pressure on the board here. I like Questing Beast before Vivian, just so that there's already some, okay. Just so that there's already some pressure by the time Vivian comes down. Wow, look at that. Look at all that removal they have. That's good stuff. Oh, it's the ooze. Yeah, this looks to be a little bit awkward. Not sure if I want to. Yeah, I think I'm just going to cast them both. I really like the idea of drawing a card next turn no matter what. And I'm not that worried about this ooze. It's not drawing them cards or anything. I'm okay with it getting a couple of counters. And I'm also not really making use of my graveyard, so... All right, looks like they're just going to pass. I think I want to see what they do about this attack before I do the Vivian. I 
I like the idea of them using a Noxious Grasp on one of those creatures instead of my Vivian. Yeah, I mean, I did want to play Vivian this turn. So this is disappointing. I didn't want to have to do this. But I think we just need to make sure to get that ooze off the battlefield. So this is still okay for us. We'll be able to play this preserver out and um, and then send Vivian down. So I'm okay with this. Hopefully that one card they have in hand isn't anything too great. Interesting gruel deck here. Um, splashing black. I mean, look at look at this suite of removal spells. <laughs> they have so many removal spells. <laughs> That's just hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, these removal spells are really hurting us. Now we're looking to be in pretty big trouble here. Could be okay if we draw a big creature, but if not, then I would say we are in serious trouble for sure. Ram through is not where we want to be. That said, I mean, maybe they have... Uh, one removal spell in hand. But Barkhide Troll is pretty uh, removal resistant, so. We're still doing okay. I mean, it's kind of a battle of the top decks at the moment. Land is not where we want to be. I mean, should I even bother attacking? I'm not going to block. I mean, I wonder if they're playing with a card like Embercleave. That's a Lurus. So we can't even cast the Ram through on the Ooze because they can just get it to a 4-4, four, four, so. But we can make this play. Uh, we need the top of our library to be a little bit better to us. Can't even attack now because the ooze is effectively a 5-5. Five, five. I like this ooze card. I mean, it seems like obviously the best green card that was released. I think it's going to see a lot of play in standard. I'm sure it wouldn't be a mistake to just straight up replace the preservers with these oozes. Yeah, it looks like I just, well, let's see. Yeah, how many creatures are left? One, two, 
Okay, so they can get that to a seven. So it's not lethal. Yeah, it's not lethal. Yeah, okay, so if it's not... Oh, Christ. Why didn't they just... Yeah, why didn't they just send that in for the attack? I think it would have just been lethal. No, it wouldn't have been lethal, because I could have done the same thing. Wow, we have drawn a lot of lands this game. All right. All right, that's good stuff from our opponent. Going to a game three. So I'm going to take one last look. So they basically have a ton of black removal spells. They're playing with Luris. And they've got this ooze. So I wonder how my sideboarding might change knowing all of that stuff. I mean, I think the adversaries are still pretty good. Don't really have any multicolored. Well, no, the serpents are really good. I think this seems okay. I think I like, yeah, I think I like the beasts more than the preservers just because they line up pretty well with the uh, gruel spellbreakers and just some of the four fours that my opponent is playing with here. I think I'm going to bring those in. Wow, this is a solid hand. Really couldn't ask for a better hand than this. So if we lose this one, then we just can't win because this, uh, this is just a gorgeous opening hand, just gorgeous. Being a three color deck, uh, my opponent can definitely, or playing a three color deck, they can um, definitely have some clunky starts. I don't think they played anything last game until turn three, so. That would be one example. Double black here. Which is good for removal, I guess. I think I'm just going to wait for them to tap out to make sure I can get the adapt on the guardian. I think I'm willing to be patient on that. But there is a limit to my patience. <laughs> there is a limit to my patience. Ah, I know they're just holding up removal. I know I'm going to get blown out by this. I think I have to go for it. I don't want to just not spend my mana. And I would rather them remove this than the Lovestruck Beast. So whatever, that's fine. I mean, if I didn't have such strong cards in my hand, then maybe I would have waited on that, but I did just want to use up my mana for the turn, so. All right. Things are looking okay for us. I mean, they have a lot of cards in hand. And we have ram through. But they're definitely under a lot of pressure, especially if we get another 1-1. One, one.
All right, looks like this is just a trade. Oh, I think Questing Beast just ends the game here. Yeah. Wow, we really lucked out on the top there. Off the top, rather. All right, well, <laughs> good stuff from us, I guess. Really good stuff from us. Yay. That was fun. Cool stuff there from our opponent. Um, I like how they're messing around with the new cards. Makes me feel lame for being a little bit conservative, but you know what? We're still doing this series. <laughs> and I'm committed to checking off every day. We're going all the way to day five. I'm not turning back. We are going five days. We've gone three so far. We've got two more. And this deck has been a lot of fun, so it's been really rewarding. Um, one thing that I want to say that I think maybe I'll elaborate on in the description of this video is um, just the question with this deck of whether you want a card like Paradise Druid to just get you closer to those four mana cards, uh, namely Vivian, Questing Beast, and uh, Shifting Ceratops out of the sideboard. So that's something I would definitely consider. I mean, the only change I've really thought about for with this deck would be replacing the Preservers with Paradise Druid. Just, um, I mean, Paradise Druid is hexproof, untapped, which is really solid. It is a two power creature, so you can just use it to, um, you know, to pressure opponents who are off to a slower start, but um, it does make use of what green is so good at, which is ramping out big creatures early. So I kind of do like the idea of maybe finding a room for Paradise Druid. I just think it's the best two drop green creature by far. I mean, it seems like this new ooze card is actually going to be pretty good. So um, especially for mono green, I think you want to play that card in like a mono green deck. But I can see what's not that good if there aren't really any creatures in the graveyard because then it's just a 2-2. Two -two. So anyway, um, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm going to sign off now. But yeah, remember to subscribe if you haven't done that already. I'm going to keep releasing videos daily, so keep an eye out. Thank you so much.